So last week, I made a video about smog and what causes it because we've had this issue for a couple of years now, but it's never been as bad as this year. And last week, I wanted to kind of learn for myself as to why there's so much smog in the entirety of South Asia. What's going on? But during my research, while I did find out as to why smog occurs, I also came across another very interesting thing. I learned why Lahore is the most polluted city in the world. And my God, it has the absolute worst luck. Hi, my name is Misha and welcome to Tariqi Tales. I know usually I do talk about historical content, but for now, smog has piqued my curiosity. And before we get into this video, I'm not going to go into details about what causes smog and all of that, because I've done that in the video last week. And if you want to know all of that, you can go down to the description box. I'll link it there. I'll link it at the end of this video as well. Now, the part that's crucial for you guys to know for this video is that there are a couple of reasons as to what causes smog in the entirety of South Asia. These include things like farmers burning the stubble of their crops, as well as vehicular emissions, industrial emissions, emissions from brick kilns and all of that. But the thing with all of these is that these emissions are common within South Asia and especially, specifically in a region known as the Indo-Gangetic Plain and the northwestern part of that plain, which I'm showing you on the map right now. And along with pollution, which occurs in all of South Asia, the annoying thing about this specific plain is the fact that due to the topography of the area and due to the weather where smog actually hits, it kind of does two things. Firstly, it kind of makes an effect called the stable meteorology effect. And what that does essentially is it stops the air from rising upwards and kind of dissipating. Now, this phenomena occurs because a layer of warm air kind of traps a layer of cooler air underneath it. And that cooler air, when it's filled with so much pollutants and so many aerosols, that is what becomes smog and it stays in that area and is unable to go upwards and go away. The other thing which affects this phenomenon in the indo gangetic Plains is the topography of the area, the geography of the area. You can see that that entire plain is kind of covered by mountain ranges on all sides. There's the Hindu Kush, there's the Himalayas, there's the Karakaram, and all of these combined kind of make an effect called the valley effect, which further stops the air from rising and moving away and thus clearing out the pollution in the area. So all of this is kind of common for all of the areas in South Asia which are affected by smog. When we look at Lahore, we see that the air quality index for Lahore is several times higher. And the reason for that is that Lahore is burdened with another natural phenomena, which kind of makes sure that it becomes the most polluted city in the world, unfortunately. Now, I found a research where researchers were also very interested in looking at why Lahore becomes this hub of pollution. And they started looking at trans-border emissions, which basically means emissions which do not originate in Pakistan, but due to the topography of the area, due to the monsoon, and due to the westward wind after the monsoon time period that causes this emission to kind of travel all the way to Lahore. And then, as you mentioned before, because of the valley effect and the stable meteorology effect, the air kind of gets trapped in this basin and stays there. But even though we always had an idea that this is something that must be happening, what this research does and why it piqued my interest was that they actually took a very methodological approach. They actually tried to figure out how much of a difference it makes. And to figure this out, they used a method called the backwards HY split trajectory. And just like you, I had no idea what this was. So I obviously looked into it and I did a little bit more research. And this is basically the hybrid single particle Lagrangian integrated trajectory model. And it is a computer model that is used to compute air parcel trajectories to determine how far and in what direction a parcel of air and subsequently air pollutants will travel. So this methodology was kind of used to assess the wind vectors which are reaching the city of Lahore. And they kind of combined this with satellite images from NASA and aeronaut-based AOD measures. Now, again, AOD is basically aerosol optical depth, 
which is kind of measuring how much light is hitting the ground unobstructed by the particles in the air. And the particles in the air are obviously pollutants. And the imaging that we're talking about from NASA is images like this, where you can see that the red dots are kind of indicating fires which have been started in different farming fields in Punjab of both India and Pakistan. And they used both of these data, especially the fires started on the Indian side, to see if they had any effect on the smog in Lahore. For this study, the researchers looked at the year 2016 to the year 2020. And what they noted was the first week of November in the city of Lahore. And these are the kind of graphs they would obtain from running their tests. Look at the graph for 2016. The results show that the highest value of AOD was recorded in an order of 2nd November, indicated by this yellow line, 4th, which is the white line, the 1st, which is the blue line, and the 3rd, which is the green line. If you notice the direction of travel for each of these lines, you see them all originating in India and going towards Lahore, which is marked by this black star on the graph. What's even more noticeable is that the region in India where they mostly come from are dotted with red spots. These are agricultural fires, their image is captured by NASA. So the wind going to Lahore not only takes with them the human emissions from India, but also the aerosols and smoke from these agricultural fires, because the wind in this area runs westward. And when we look at the rest of the figures, we see how the levels of AOD are low when the trajectories are traveling from within Pakistan. And this trend is found consistent throughout the first seven days of November from the year 2015 to the year 2020 with slight variations. So one of the reasons why Lahore basically is kind of burdened with being becoming the world's most polluted city is obviously there are a lot of emissions that are taking place in the city itself. There are, are industrial zones very close to the city, which again are causing huge amounts of emissions. And at the same time, Pakistani Punjab is also doing the similar thing with burning their crop stubble and increasing emissions. But the massive difference between Lahore's air quality and the air quality of other South Asian cities can be understood by this phenomena where westwards polluted winds are actually coming from the Indian side of Punjab and are actually staying in the Lahore area causing it to become so heavily polluted. The researchers also point out that to be able to understand more about these phenomena, Pakistan needs to set up much better ground surveillance of the air quality. Because right now they're using external measures like the ones from NASA and the ones from these models. So there we go. That's why Lahore is the most polluted city because along with all the other emissions, it just has the absolute worst luck. And it really is very sad because Lahore is my absolute favorite city in the entire world. But well, there are policies that the government is kind of putting into place to make sure that the smog is kind of controlled in the following years. But we can maybe talk about that in another video. If you like this video, let me know down in the comments and I will see you guys next time. Bye.